Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna. I'm an artist and Vifi Paper instructor from Astashkina Cakes. And today in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to make beautiful, relatively realistic Vifi Paper and Ethereum. Let's begin. Okay, so let's start with making our Vifi Paper and Ethereum. I've been trying to find a mold or a way to make Wi-Fi paper and Ethereum for a long period of time. So today I'm going to show you my own technique, how you can work with Wi-Fi paper and create beautiful textures without using any equipment. You will need my template and I'll start with cutting just one part. This is going to be roughly the size of my flower. So I have my template and for my wifi paper, I'm going to use just regular wifi paper. This one is 0.22 millimeters. And I know that I'm going to need about a half of the wifi paper sheet to make my flower. And because I wanted to dust my flower, I'm going to use shiny side of wifi paper on both sides. So here you can see it's roughly about the size of my template. And to make my flower, I need to prepare everything at the same time because it's going to be relatively quickly. I will need a foam pad. Today I'm using white foam pad. This is by PME because that's the softest floral pad I have. I also will need my pattern because that's what I'm going to use to transfer my veins onto wafer paper. I will take my coarse arch with a fluffy brush. And of course, I'm going to use my conditioner or AC tonic. I'm going to apply my conditioner with a large brush. First, I'm going to do this in the middle on one side, trying to get as even coverage as possible without oversaturating my wafer paper. So you can see I'm being gentle, but working relatively fast like this. And now I'm going to sandwich or fold it over Make sure that I do not get any ear pockets or bubbles in between layers of wafer paper. So now I have my double thickness wafer paper and I'm going to take my template and cut my anthurium flower. Okay, so now I have my anthurium flower on one side. I'm going to take my floral pot and apply a small amount of cornstarch on the back side. That's the side where saturated with moisture. And now I'm going to condition my front side or the more drier side. And that's the side we are going to apply our textures to. And I'm going to play around and make sure that my wafer paper becomes flexible and I can shape it. Now I'm going to take my floral pot apply smallest amount of cornstarch just to prevent my tool from sticking and I'll take my pattern place my conditioned wafer paper on top and I'm going to take my Dresden tool and gently press through the lines you can see I'm being really careful and mindful about the amount of pressure I apply and my goal here is to work quickly before my wifi paper starts to dry but i also want these lines to be pronounced and visible like that so now i have my texture i can take my pattern out and i can spend a little bit more time switching between thick end of wifi paper and thin end and add more definition to my anthurium maybe a few lines in between. And if this technique wouldn't work for you on the first try, just keep trying and keep doing this again. If you wanted this to be more, even more obvious and more visible on the front side, what you can do is turn this upside down and take a thick end of your Dresden tool and just play and press here at the corners. So then this part will be more pronounced compared to being before. So I'm going to press gently on the back side on my corners just to push it forward on the front side like that. And now I have my beautiful textural anthurium. What I'm going to do is just run my ball tool on the back side to curl it a little bit because now it looks a little bit too flat. So you can see. 
I wanted to run it on the back side to give some movement like this and I know that I wanted my center to go right here so I'll take just a small amount of my beefy paper conditioner or you can use beefy paper glue and I wanted to overlap and shape it in a way like an anthurium flower and feel free to play around and shape your wifi paper the way you want it to while it's still soft and flexible you can see it will get on any shape you want it to i'm quite happy with my look so i'll take a bumpy foam or something to help it dry in this shape and i will set it aside before dusting and adding any color and while we waiting for our flowers to dry let's make our center i'm going to use 20 gauge green wire any thick wire would work that's what i have on hand and i will take my piece you have your template to create to cut this piece and again to shape it i'm going to condition my wifi paper with the wifi paper conditioner and i might be a little bit more generous because i wanted this to be sticky and very flexible so I'm going to place one end of my wire on this side and start bringing it over, twist and turn. So I have twist and turn. So I have my center with the anthurium flower made out of wafer paper. And when your wafer paper is soft and flexible and you, and you have enough moisture, you can shape it, you can make it any, almost any shape you wanted to, like you would do with gum paste. But before it, it is dry, I wanted to give it a little bit of movement. So I'm going to twist it and fold it a little bit on the side. So this is going to be my anthurium center. And I will set it aside to dry. Now that my center is dry, I wanted to add texture and I'm going to use my pollen mixture. This is basically semolina flower with yellow petal dust. But I find the easiest way to apply to something long like this is to use a piece of paper, fold it in half, and I will put my pollen mixture here. Same as we did for our color lily flower, that's the same method. And I'm going to use confectioner's glaze. You can use piping gel or even wafer paper glue, whatever you have on hand. For me, I prefer to use confectioner's glaze because it dries very quick and it won't melt my wafer paper. So I'm going to apply a thin layer of confectioner's glaze onto my center and apply my pollen mixture. On both sides so you can see it takes almost no time to do that and confectioner's glaze will be dry in about five minutes now my flower is dry and i'm going to use petal dust these are by the sugar oil and i think i'm going to use like light pink a touch of red color maybe a little bit of green i wanted to play around but the most important ingredient or petal dust you need to make your anthurium look really realistic is something like brilliant sparkle or any edible pearl color i'll start with my large brush and i'll take a touch of the sicilian rose color and i'm going to liberally generally dust my flower i want this to still look white or on a lighter spectrum but i wanted to emphasize all the textures or all the veins we created and i'm going to focus a lot here in the middle to make it a little bit darker and different in color and for the outside i wanted to use a touch of red and gently almost scrape it on the outside to bring a little bit more attention to my color so now you can see it looks a little bit flat and i'll take my green color small amount of this fern green and I wanted to bring it in from the bottom or from the big side and again rub on the outside and a little bit on my veins here from the bottom like really really tiny thin brush and I'll take maybe a little bit more of this green and paint here on my veins again to showcase all the hard work we put into creating this flower and 
to make it even more realistic and even more looking like Anthurium flower. I'm going to lightly dust my flower to set the color just a touch and I'm going to bring my brilliant sparkle color and I'll take light brush and I'm going to cover the whole flower with this brilliant sparkle color to make it look almost shiny like Anthurium flowers in nature. Another option you can use is something like an edible glitter spray. Just small now. And the last step to make it look even more realistic and shiny, you need to use something like PME clear spray or any edible lacquer that used to, that most of the time used for chocolate. You can see how shiny and thick it makes it look like. I'm going to set it aside for a second and I'll dust my center the same way. So I'll take a touch of my pink color, mainly at the bottom, and a little progression of the color throughout the center. And on my top, I'm going to use this green fern color by the Sugar Art. And I will put all the links and names for the tools I use in the description of this video. So here is my Anthurium Tender. We don't need to use any shine or spray on that. It's going to stay the way it is. And now that we have all our pieces, we need to assemble our flower. I'm going to take my wafer paper glue. You can use water or anything that's available for you. And I'm going to apply small amount here on the bottom of my stem and insert that through the center of my anthurium. So that is going to be the shape of my flower. You can see how I position my center and because I have just a touch of a paper glue it will be enough to attach my flower to my center. Now that we have our anthurium, the last thing we need to do is to make our stem thicker because even 18 or 20 gauge wire is not enough for the realistic look of the flower. To do that, I'm going to use my favorite technique is by using uh, tissue paper or Kleenex, something that you can split in different layers. You can see here I have just one layer and I'm going to cut this into about two and a half centimeters or one inch strips of paper. I find this way is just the easiest way to assemble or make your stem thicker. And I'm going to take my light green floral tape, stretch it first and apply first layer onto my wire, covering entirely the whole wire of the flower with the light green floral tape. And then I'm going to do the same with my tissues or Kleenex pieces is to add layers. Again, same as we did with for our color lily flower and same as technique I use for my tulips. Anytime I need to make a thicker stem, I prefer to apply a few layers of tissue paper. Now that my anthurium stem is sufficiently thick, I'm going to apply another layer of floral tape to fix everything together. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to pull my floral tape as hard as I can and make it as tight as possible because floral tape won't stick to my tissue paper or anything else, but because of the special wax that in between layers of floral tape, floral tape sticks to itself relatively easy. Like that. And I'll apply probably another layer of floral tape to cover my stem. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ball tool or any tool at this matter and just gently rub it all over my stem to even it out and hide all the layers and separation in between my floral tape. And just like that, I have my beautiful anthurium flower that I made without using any molds or any texture pots, just by using template uh, you can download in the description. 
Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video and share with your cake friend because I want everyone to try working with wafer paper and see how easy it is. And if you're going to make your wafer paper on Ethereum, don't forget to post on social media and tag me as Astashkina Cakes. And I'll see you next week, same time, same place. Bye bye.